sun We can't go wrong My life was lonely and blue Yeah, I was sad as a sailor I was an angry one too And there was you up here Hi, I'm Whitney Smith and I'm here hosting uh, Rescue Roundtable and today we are going to learn about animal massage. My guest is Pam Holt, who is a vet tech, registered vet tech, and also, believe it or not, a licensed massage therapist for animals. There is a school you go to to learn this. Yeah. And um, while you might be thinking, I haven't gotten a massage this week, that might be true, but you could give your animal a massage. It's probably a lot less expensive to do it yourself and um, your pet would be probably very appreciative. So, welcome Pam. Thank you, it's great to be here. Who do we have here, our, our masseuse? This is my dog, Suge. She's about nine years old. I think she's a long-haired Dotson Corgi mix, and she came from the streets of LA, wasn't able to find her former family. She looked like she had been homeless for a while, so she's been my soulmate ever since for about the last seven years or so. And gets a lot of massaging. Yes, she's evidently. been a wonderful <laughs> teacher for me. Now, so. where do you, how do you teach? Do you teach a, as a class or do you do freelance? Or people come to, you come to people's homes? Yes, I do house calls and I usually will show my clients how to do massages in between professional massages. Mm -hmm. Sometimes I'll do demonstrations and um, show a group of people how to, how to massage their animal every chance I get. And like, do you, are you doing this, this is your full-time career? Yes. Teaching the world how to massage their animals. And I can understand that there'd be vast differences between, say, a cat massage and a dog massage, since I have both. I'm trying to visualize. Hmm, right. How would that work? <laughs> the cat's a little lighter, mm -hmm. but, uh, but basically the same thing, just with a lighter touch and, and maybe a little more patience. And I would, uh, are there different types of massages? Like I know for humans, obviously there's, for different, you know, for therapeutic reasons, for relaxation reasons, what would be the kind of massages that you are, instruct? Exactly. Um, relaxation, um, pre-performance warm-up, mm -hmm. after the performance cool down, mm -hmm. um, maintenance, uh, sometimes for you know arthritis and senior things. care yes exactly mm -hmm. I got so a little there are hip action on my dog so yes, yes. you just kind of use your intuition of, of what kind of massage is needed for each animal sometimes and since you're a vet tech you would know medically you know what would be better I'm sure that really informs your massage uh, experience because you know sometimes pressing on something is not a good idea and so you would be able to you have the whole package right all, all that information yes. well we'd love to see a demonstration of some of these vet massage techniques uh, Great. Um, sugar <laughs> sure. um, she's ready to be our, uh, our demo dog right well uh, the, the benefits of massage are, are endless really and um, it's all about circulation encouraging circulation um, if you find any tightness or tension, that means that there's not enough circulation in that area mm -hmm. and there, there's not enough oxygen and nutrition getting to those tissues which can cause toxin buildup which uh, causes inflammation and trigger points in, in muscles which are build up, buildups of uh, lactic acid which is a metabolic waste of the body. So um, there's a few things you'd want to make sure before you start, you want to make sure they haven't eaten for about an hour or so, but you don't want them to be hungry. Okay. You want to make sure their bladder and bowels mm -hmm. are empty. Right. And if they have a lot of energy, you might want to take them for a walk first to get some of that energy mm -hmm. out mm -hmm. so that they can relax easier. And um, create like a calm ambience, like uh, you can play some, some relaxing music at a low volume and dim the lights a little bit and uh, maybe light some candles. Some scented candles are good for aromatherapy. Okay. And, what, um, what scent? Lavender's good lavender. for relaxation. I like lavender a lot. And if you have another dog that's a big attention hound, you might have to put him in another room. But most dogs, being pack animals, will just lay down next to you and kind of enjoy it themselves. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. they can benefit from it also. So, so that's a nice thing to do. And one thing to remember is, to, um, is that 
Massage is never a, a replacement for proper veterinary care. It's a compliment, right. compliment to yes. it. So um, always see your trusted veterinarian when you have persistent problems. Okay. Okay, so um, first we're going to start. Um, when you said that you can feel the tension, what to you, what are you feeling? Oh, um, is it a hardness? It's to a the tightness. Muscle? You know, it's not, you know, uh, opposite of loose. You know, it'd be a little tight, which is usually areas like the neck is where they hold tension in the shoulders, mm -hmm. the withers area, the loin area back mm -hmm. here, uh, the hip joint. Just all of the joints you give uh, special attention to. Uh, the areas where there's not a, as much muscle, like the elbow, mm -hmm. the knee, the rib cage, those you'd use less pressure, and then you'd use more pressure with, with the heavy, heavier muscled areas, like the muscles of the back, and the shoulder, and the thigh. And um, you kind of operate on the basis of their feedback as to the pressure that you'll use. They'll let you know if you're not, if you're doing it too hard um, mm -hmm. or if you're not doing it hard enough, they'll lean into you more. But um, you first want to <laughs> probably wash your hands for okay. um, energetic and hygienic reasons. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you can start the massage by getting your hands kind of listening by rubbing them together. And you can kind of feel the energy. Do you use oils or any kind of? I usually thing? don't. No. No. Mm -mm. And then you'll start um, by what we call scanning, mm -hmm. which you barely touch the fur. You're kind of feeling for areas of coolness or heat, mm -hmm. or tingling, spasms, knots. Okay. There's no. There's no dinner here. <laughs> I know it's a date moment. <laughs> Then you start with strokes we call effleurage, which are long, continuous, relaxing strokes that can get them uh, used to touch if they are a touch-shy animal. Um, if the animal has a very dense coat, you have to probably adjust your pressure. I mean, today to a pit bull, it's very, their muscles are like right there. Right there, so. yes. Sometimes you have to dig a little deeper to find them. But so, you'll just warm up the muscles with these long strokes. We'll see if we can get her in a better good. position. It's not her natural environment, so. Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay. okay, it's good to have to be up against their back. Okay. I'm usually on the floor, but mm -hmm. this should work. <laughs> so, you squeeze the feet. Would enough. you do this weekly for your animal? Or? I, I suggest to my clients weekly, but what is really ideal is a few minutes a day. Mm -hmm. Even just putting your hands on the muscles, warming them up mm -hmm. is good. On the joint areas. Um, it's, it's wonderful for, for fearful animals, um, maybe animals that have a history of abuse. It's getting them used to touch. It's improving their socialization and their um, trust. Did I say trust? Bonding. Yes. Good for bonding and um, decreases fear and anxiety. Uh, what you're doing, you're releasing endorphins, which is the, the body's natural pain reliever. She's just got endorphins too. Yeah. Not just us. Yes. I think she likes it. Stimulating the blood <laughs> flow. Now so she's used to, when you first started doing massages on this dog, did she react? Uh, was it hard or did she, she took immediately? She right away. Really? She, hmm. She loved Very smart it right dog. Away. Yes. Very smart dog. Like, oh, this feels nice. So once you kind of get the muscles warmed up a little bit, you can start with the deeper petrissage, it's called, which you can start with the superficial kneading. Mm -hmm any area where there's loose skin, like the neck. Kind of roll the skin with your fingers. It stimulates the blood flow. Do it all along the back where there's loose skin. Now my dog has sort of a sore area towards her lower spine. I notice if I am kind of rubbing her and I am a little rough, she'll yelp. So I yes. think that's an early, probably arthritis. 
Yeah, and w what's important, if they have a, a sore spot or mm -hmm. a trouble area, you can start away from that area and kind of work towards the mm -hmm. sore spot as they are more relaxed. And I see. you can usually get a better reaction from them. So, I think the dog. Shoulders. Kind of fell asleep. <laughs> yeah, she should be. She loves the lights. Nice. Other areas to um, pay attention to are along the spine where the, there are transitions in the spine. You start okay. off with um, seven cervical vertebrae and you can feel the first vertebrae is the atlas has wings and you massage around the wings. Oh, so there's behind the ear? Mm -hmm. right there. Okay. So there's seven cervical vertebrae, then 13 thoracic, which all are attached to ribs. Mm -hmm. The last rib is a floating rib. It doesn't attach to the sternum like the rest of them do. Then we have seven lumbar vertebrae and three fused sacral vertebrae, and then the caudal varies depending on how long the tail is. But at each of those transition areas are spots to pay attention to. Massage. Are those numbers consistent with every type of dog? Mm hmm Oh, wow. Except for the caudal, which always right. varies from 2 huh. to 22 yeah. or so. There's another technique called um, T-touches, mm -hmm. which um, are, is a miraculous technique that uh, Linda Tellington Jones came up with. And the basis of it, the foundation of it, is one and a quarter circles. If you visualize uh, a small clock faces and you start at six, you go around past six to eight, just all over the body, and kind of wakes up the neurons and don't really understand exactly how it works, but it, it, I wow. found it to be amazing with shelter animals. The little the circles. Things. Yeah. Uh, there's and lots of tea touches. You can um, check out teatouch.com for all the different um, tea touches, but this is the foundation. So I intersperse this throughout the massage. I just love the tea touches. Very nice. And when you're going deeper, you want to make sure you intersperse it with effleurage to drain that area of the lactic acid that you're mm -hmm. getting loose. Mm -hmm. About how long, you say even a couple of minutes a day would be great, but what is a, say, a full massage? Well, many of my clients, I use a full hour for them. Wow. But, um, sometimes. Now I'm really jealous. Yeah. <laughs> and I also do 90 minute massages, which are great wow. and, and goes pretty fast for the and poor how, animals that need it. And how long would a cat, an average cat massage be? Um, we say this with love, but. <laughs> yes. I don't know, I've got some cats that I think would, would be up for it for a while. Well, um, no more than a half hour. Okay, okay. It's about the longest I've been able to. I mean, my cats at home will go all night, but wow. but usually with other and, than my own cat. And where would you hour. find tension for the cat? The cats always seem so flexible and floppy. Yes, they're wonderful they? at stretching. Um, but they do still in their neck areas, neck. the shoulder, all the, the joints, and the same thing, especially the older ones that mm -hmm. don't, don't stretch as much as they should. I have two 18-year-olds that are kind of bony, Aww. and, uh, you know, uh, they, they seem less limber than... Yes. So I could probably Let's do a little massaging stretch. there. Yes. That would be wonderful. So you, instead of just petting, your dog or your cat, you can actually do something therapeutic for them. Exactly. Petting. While you're watching the TV or yes. Yeah. Or just, you know, relaxing. Yes. And then your dog will turn around and do it to you. No. That would be nice. <laughs> have them my walk on your back. Do that. My kitties are wonderful masseuses. I do actually have one that sits on my shoulders and I'm so happy because she's exactly the perfect way when I'm reading. She just gets up and then she's here. I'm like, yes. <laughs> so uh so just uh, moving the, oh, moving any adhesions along the spine is good. Um, so you did a smoothing and a, and, a, and a deep tissue, kind of like a deep tissue. Right. Okay. And then you can um, use some acupressure points, which are very good to, um, to use. I could talk about a few master points first. Okay. Um, one is large intestine four, which is in the web of the dewclaw, just like here is a point for us. Mm -hmm. Right here, ready, Chick? Good girl. 
you just hold the skin. Make sure it's just the skin or it'll be painful. But this is the master point for the head, mouth, and uh, face. Okay. And it is a good pain reducing and immune system builder. And um, so I love that one. Uh, another one is Stomach 36, which is below the knee. It's in the muscle right below the knee. She's got a lot of fur here, mm -hmm. so it's hard to see. But this is the master point for the abdomen and the GI tract. Okay. It is boosts energy of the whole body. If you can see where I am here. It's below the knee. It's below, in the, the oh, belly of the muscle. Okay. Of the tibia muscle there. Very good. And um, that increases strength of the lower legs mm -hmm. and the hind end. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the last master point I'll show there. There's more, but I'll just show right. here. Is bladder 40 which is in the popliteal fossa behind the knee. And this, um, can you, this can is you, the, can you see, uh, this is the, maybe. this is the master point for the lower, oh, wow. right here. Yeah, the oh. hind area is such a problem for so many dogs, mm -hmm. like particularly so this stiffness. Is a, yeah, this is a great point for the lower back hips hind end and um, is a good pain reducer, reduces stiffness and also constipation. Right? Excellent. Yes. Now do you do massaging on the belly too or? Yes. Okay. Yes. With the um, dog be prone? You can or? do strokes down the abdomen or circles. Uh, speaking of constipation, if there is constipation, you can move things along mm -hmm. by going clockwise up clockwise. the ascending colon. Okay. Path across the transverse colon and down the descending colon, and kind of get things moving. So that's it's like good. a kind of firm pressure, or mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh or just wow, that's good to know. Coaxing, gentle coaxing, and face. Another a good, good yes. You massaging the face is good. Yeah, the jaw. Okay. They hold tension in their jaw just like we do. Hold along here, make them smile, <laughs> and of course up here also. But another good acupressure point I wanted to show for, that's good for emergencies is uh, governing vessel 26, which is right here, right under the nose there. Wow. And this is um, good if an animal's in shock or unconscious. This can revive them. So that's a good oh, point wow. to know. Very good. Uh, another one. Why don't Easy we to reach, them? too. Yes. Let's show them uh, large intestine 11, which it's in the crease of the elbow when the elbow is flexed. Okay. Right here. And this is a good anti-inflammatory pain reducer, good for um, reducing fever and building the immune system. Um, let's see. Another one we'll show is bladder 60, which is in the skinny part of the hock. I should have done it while we were back here. Okay. This is where the skin is. This is called the aspirin point. Did I set it up? This... Um, so it's a good pain reliever and muscle relaxer, yes. There's actually another point on the, on the inside, it's kidney three, and these together are great to use. So you just hold that skin there. Uh, these points you How can long? hold for about five seconds, but anywhere mm -hmm. up to 30 seconds if you want. Okay. You can also use a circular motion. And uh, let's see here, we'll show ladder 60 is good. This, why didn't I write this one down? Oh, no, did I say, sorry, not bladder 60, uh, governing vessel 20 right here. This and is good for nervousness, irritability. This nervousness. Is good. This is right in the, um, like the dimples below the occiput. Okay. Right below the skull. Of course, the occiput. Yes, <laughs> I knew that. This, no. The skull, the, um, you, know, you can get both sides up one. one. There. Particularly if you have, you know, taking animals to adoptions or whatever, you know, and they're getting a little nervous. So these things can also help make them present themselves a little definitely, more calmly. Definitely, definitely. Um, one more point is what called Bahue. It's a very important point in front of the pelvis, okay. the lumbosacral junction right here. You probably know how much your dog loves this. Oh, yeah, the you spot. You can use a back and forth <laughs> motion. This is the point of a hundred meetings right here. With people, that's up here on the head. Okay. But with dogs, it's here. So this is a very good point to use. 
um, the base of the ears, all the way out to the tip. Oh. Great. And the tip of the tail. Aha. Uh -huh. Tip of the tail. That's good. Um, oh, all along the spine, in between the vertebrae of the spine. Mm -hmm. These are, uh, a lot of these are associ association points that are associated with the different organs and influence the different organ systems. Um, between the toes are wonderful points. Just at the base of the nail. These are what you call ting points because they either begin, the uh, meridians either begin or end uh, between the digits. So those are good points too. And where did the study of all this massage, how, how did this information come? Did the body of knowledge that you're incredibly explaining with so much detail, I'm like, wow. It's I a should have talked about acupressure first. It's a traditional Chinese medicine, ancient method. But did then, some veterinarian people or holistic, I'm just trying, I'm just curious to know how, I mean, obviously there's a physical understanding of the animal's body, but then how did the massaging come into that body of knowledge? You know, it started out with horses. A lot. Oh, really? They, the athletes, they, they started horse massage a long time ago, but massaging animals has been around a long time. Oh, yeah, that's... and um, yeah, all these methods that we use now have been around for a long time, except for tea touch, maybe that's something new. Right, but, right. But this... I think that they've been using circles for mm -hmm. a while. Mm -hmm. And um, so, yeah, I'm glad that it's finally getting more popular. I've been doing it for about five years, and it's wonderful to see as time goes on how much more popular and, and known it gets. And I just want everybody to to practice it on their own animals because... My, my dog gets very um, anxious uh, sometimes and she's sort of pacing around the apartment. I'm going to try. Of course, I haven't been properly trained, but just a few tips that I'm seeing here and to see what, whether that brings her energy a little calmer and yes, more focused. Yes, it should. I have a booklet that I can give you, and if anybody wants it, they can email me, pam at buddhadog.com, and I will um, send them a link to a PDF or Word file of this booklet that I hope that will be more helpful. <laughs> I think if we could interview the dog, it would say, I very highly recommend being massaged, and um, I feel less stressed. I think so and very calm and now I want to go take a nap. <laughs> <laughs> but um, after you get everything warmed up is when you'd want to do some stretches is also Oh, like, like a like a Thai massage sort of <laughs> for dogs? <laughs> I guess so. Let's see, let me show. Let's okay. show some stretches here. This is once everything is warmed up. Ideally, she'd be on her back, on her side. On but, the ground. Um, we do a shoulder extension where you bring it forward. You always make the stretches slow, fluid, and never pass the point of, point of resistance. And always okay. with support on both sides of the joint. So shoulder extension then. Nice. Backwards. Be a deltoid. Stretch back. Wow. Hold it for about eight seconds. The stretch okay. is really in the hold. I'm just going to put it back here. And then back here also. Also for your dog, some seem to have seen a lot of dogs and cats with three legs or mm. where the one missing leg, the yeah. other leg is taking on all the stress. Exactly. So that would be really That's great. what happens with injuries also. If there's an injury, you'll end up having to pay a lot of attention to the other leg because that's what's been uh, bearing all the weight mm -hmm. and making up for for what the other limb can't do. She was like, here's my a, leg feels longer now. Here's a small uh, small buttock stretch where you bring the leg forward. You can kind of massage the muscle gently. Does that pull from the muscles up here? Exactly, okay. yes. So you hold that, okay, and then... Uh, so you would do the stretching after you do the massage? Yes, the muscles have to be warmed okay. up for the stretches. We'll go back, hold, 
And now I feel like I have been doing very it. unproductive petting of my dog. No, no. <laughs> like we could have been doing something far more uh, relaxing. And just there's flexing true, the never. ankle like this. And the it's pressure like, points between the toes is really... Oh, that's, those are great, yes. And if your animal doesn't respond right away, you know, don't give up because, you know, don't, you should give up for that particular period. <laughs> Try the next day a little bit, just a little bit at a time, and soon they'll realize how much they love it. Just mm. kind of shake it out after, shake it out. And, and it for out. the cats, it's, it's similar. You're going to start slow and exactly you see slower. how much they're responsive but particularly for older cats I can see that you know they they're not getting the kind of they're not as active mm -hmm. so that would mean much less circulation exactly and um, and and injuries for, for definitely help probably heal yes it's like I said the circulation is what it's all about and, and bringing more nutrients and oxygen and, and blood to to the areas is, is what helps heal faster and prevents injury. Fantastic. So just, yeah, it works Well, great. thank you so much, Pam. Thank I you, I love Whitney. and thank you for, for bringing such, an, such a wonderful uh, massage dog. I, although she I, loves the spotlight. Absolutely, and we've learned a lot about how to help massage your pets for better health and for relaxation for them and for yourself, and it's a good bonding thing to do with your pet too. So. Um, and again, you have a website that you can download information and, and if you want to try it at home or take a class. Yes. Absolutely. I think I'll be uh, signing up. All right. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank Whitney. you.